Excuse me, Caroline. I really hate having to say this again, but the breakfast you made me this morning just didn't meet my refined taste. And it's quite apparent that you haven't bothered to clean the house properly either. Considering there's still dust lingering around in my bedroom. Sorry, Aurora. I'll be more careful next time. Wow. You've been bumming around this place for over a month now. Don't you think it's high time you actually learn how to do some basic housework without needing me to hold your hand every step of the way? I guess so. I can't seem to keep everything straight. Sorry. Oh. Don't give me your half-hearted apologies. I want to see some real evidence that you've actually managed to grab something from your past mistakes. So instead of just blabbering apologies, how about you actually step up and start doing better? Prove to me that you're capable of improvement. You're right. I also see that you've been slacking off and neglecting some important matters. What's this nonsense about you making Harvey, my esteemed eldest son, and the pride of this family, do dishes and clean the bathrooms? Why on earth would you subject him to such lowly housework? We always used to split all the housework. You mean, this has been going on since before you moved in? Well, Harvey is better at a lot of it than I am. Do you think that matters in the slightest? Just so we're clear, I prefer it if you put a stop to that today. Hey, just a reminder, we both have jobs and contribute equally to the household. Plus, I gotta say, Harvey doesn't really buy into those traditional gender role ideas you've got going on. Ugh, you clearly have a talent for misunderstanding me. Seriously, there's just no getting through to you sometimes. It's like talking to a brick wall. I'm sorry you feel that way. If you can't handle juggling your precious job and the simple task of housework, maybe it's time for you to quit. I mean, who needs a career when there are dishes to be washed and floors to be cleaned, right? Priorities, darling. Priorities. Why? Just because you both have work, now that you think it's perfectly fine to dump your husband with all the housework? That's just downright unacceptable. And let's not forget about poor little Summer. Stuck in daycare because you can't be bothered to take care of your own child. Well, you see, I have this thing called planning for the future. I want to save up money so that we can support Summer, whatever path she chooses in life. So, quitting my job is not on the agenda. Besides, I actually enjoy what I do. It gives me a sense of fulfillment and independence. A woman's place is in the home, not at the office. I have allowed you into my family home. Do you understand that? Yes. You think you can run wild and do whatever the hell you want, just because my husband passed away? No, of course not. Oh, if my husband could just get a glimpse of the pathetic state this house is in right now, he'd be doing backflips in his grave. You know that saying, when in Rome, do as the Romans do? It means you should adapt to the situation you're in. Well, let me break it down for you, since you seem to be so clueless. In this household, it's the woman's job to be the submissive wife and support her husband, no matter what. And let me tell you, you're doing a lousy job at that. Get your act together, lady. I'm sorry you feel that way. Oh, bless your heart, dear. I'm afraid the day I actually deemed you worthy of being a part of this family is still years and years away. So don't hold your breath, darling. Now, if you truly aspire to be a member of this esteemed family, I kindly suggest you wave goodbye to that silly job of yours and redirect your pitiful efforts towards housework. After all, someone needs to pick up the slack around here, and it's clearly not going to be me. Let's be real, sweetheart. I have absolutely no doubt that all of this valuable advice is graciously bestowing upon you is entering one ear and exiting out the other without making the slightest impact. It's like talking to a goldfish. Gosh, my dear. I'm really sorry that you find me so disagreeable, Aurora. I'm afraid I don't have a job that I can just walk away from suddenly, but I'll keep what you said in mind. Well. I suppose that's the highest level of achievement I can hope for from you. It's my duty as the all-knowing matriarch to give you some guidance, you know? If only you and my son had moved in right after getting married, 
I could have molded you into the perfect daughter-in-law from day one. Alas, I guess I'll just have to shoulder the blame myself for letting you run wild and unchecked. Oh well, live and learn, right? I promise I'll do what I can to make you happy. Hey, do me a favor and make sure you actually follow through with all of this, okay? Just keep the drama and hassle as far away from me as possible. That would be pleasant. Hey, Aurora, I'm sorry for disturbing you while you're out, but I wanted to let you know that Summer came across a chocolate box and I think it might be your favorite one. Is it yours? That's right, let me guess. She wants some chocolate. It does seem that way. Would it be alright if I give her a piece of chocolate? I can pay you back for them later. Of course. Give her a piece of chocolate, please. Thanks, Aurora. Oh, but only Summer. You can't have any. You're not a member of the family yet, in my eyes. Yeah, no problem. I won't eat any of your chocolate. Really? I don't want to find out you've been sneaking any. Don't worry. I'm on a diet anyway. Wow, you're one of those types who packs on the pounds at the drop of a hat, aren't you? Poor you. Must be such a struggle. You see, in our family, we effortlessly maintain a slim figure without breaking a sweat. Sadly, not everyone can have our superior genetics and disciplined lifestyle. Tough luck, I guess. Yeah, I know. Summer stays pretty slim no matter what as well. I'm glad she doesn't take after me in that respect. Don't get ahead of yourself. She's still just a child. We have no idea how she'll turn out. She's got your chubby genes in her as well, after all. I guess she does. Anyway, have you thought about what we talked about? What's that? Are you going to give up that silly job and focus on your real work at home? Oh, that. Harvey said it's fine if I keep working. Oh, please. You're already 35. In just a few more years, it'll get difficult for you to have another child. That's true. Why are you talking like that doesn't affect you? Are you saying you aren't going to have any more children? No, I haven't really thought much about it. But we already have Summer. And what about an heir? An heir? That sounds very archaic. Who is going to continue the family line? Don't tell me you're thinking of letting it end with Harvey. You know, even if I did get pregnant, there's no guarantee we would have a boy. And that's why you need to have another child as soon as possible. Once Summer is married off, the family name is gone. I guess so. But what about Avery? She has a son. Avery married into another family. She took her husband's last name, so her son can't possibly take over the family. Is that how it works? Oh, you really haven't given this any thought at all. And yet, you still have the nerve to enter my house? It's a wife's job to provide an heir. Honestly, what have you been doing this whole time? Sorry, I haven't given any thought to that kind of thing. I see. Well, I think this is going to just about exhaust Harvey's affections. I beg your pardon? You heard this morning's conversation, didn't you? I said that I want today's dinner to be family only. Harvey was very receptive. He said that it had been a while, did he not? <laughs> you seemed a little bit flustered at the time. I take it you understood the implication. Uh, well... I'm afraid it's impossible to consider someone like you with no proper family values as a part of my family. I know that Harvey thinks so as well inside his heart. Unfortunately for you, I'd say that your time as a married couple may be coming to an end soon. I have to admit, I'd much prefer a new, younger bride around the house. <laughs> Do you really have to say it like that? You know, I'd really like to get along with you, Aurora. You know, considering that you're likely going to find yourself divorced soon, why don't you consider today's practice for the future and just eat by your lonesome? The rest of us will enjoy our time together as a family. Harvey, bad news. I know I made it very clear that I was only inviting Avery and her son to dinner, but it seems she's bringing that husband of hers along as well anyway. Here I thought we were finally going to be able to eat together as a family. What a waste. That's perfectly fine. You should be thankful that he's coming. No, it isn't fine. After all I went through, 
all the trouble of getting rid of Caroline, too. Wasted. Please come a little early, won't you? What are you doing now? Oh, I'm not going. What do you mean? I said we're going to have a family dinner. Why aren't you coming? Huh? I'm going to eat with Caroline, of course. Excuse me? Why would you eat with Caroline? What about our plans? Yeah, actually I wanted Summer to join us too. But she's having a sleepover at a friend's house. So Caroline and I get to have a date night for once. But why? You promised that tonight would be a family-only dinner. So why are you eating dinner with Caroline? Because we're family? Aren't I your family? I thought so, but I don't know if I can consider you as part of the family if you won't treat my wife as part of the family. I don't seem to follow. I told you when we move in, didn't I? Caroline and I are a team and share our responsibilities. So I ask you not to try and push all the housework on her. And we never planned on leaving here. But you messaged me, saying how lonely you were here all by yourself. And it was Caroline who worried about you the most and decided that we should come stay with you. I told you all this from the beginning, specifically. So you couldn't claim that you didn't know. Well, it's just... I didn't want her to forget her wifely duties. Just because she's here living in our home. I was teaching her the things she needs to know as a good wife. Okay, mom. I think we're out. I never actually even agreed to this in the first place. What do you mean, you're out? Are you saying you're going to abandon me here? You've been pushing all the housework on Caroline. You've been telling her to quit her job and give us an heir. Who wants to live with someone like that? She told you that, did she? Ugh, I can't stand people who badmouth others behind their backs. I wouldn't call it that, considering it's all completely true. And besides, I didn't hear it from Caroline. I heard it from Summer. What? She said that you're always bullying Caroline. I can't believe you would do that in front of your granddaughter. Aren't you embarrassed at all? Well, there it is. That child is definitely her mother's daughter. She raised quite an impudent little brat. Hey now, that's my child as well that you're talking about. I never liked Caroline from the beginning. A very plain girl. And she pushes her housework off on the men. I don't think she even realizes she's someone's wife. This isn't the 50s. Caroline is the most important person in my life. Maybe if she'd at least given you a son. Maybe then I would be able to look at her in a little better light. But here we are. She's totally useless for you, dear. You really have to get rid of her. The best sort of girl for you is the one who wants to stay at home and take care of the house. Who's the useless one? Even though you're still perfectly capable, you don't do anything around the house. We pay all the bills. The only thing you actually do around the house is just bully my wife, it seems. How dare you say such a thing? After I've sucked up all my pride just to live with that woman? Nobody asked to live with you. And all this talk about an heir? Since when is our family so special? Grandma herself said our ancestors were just a bunch of loudmouth nobodies from the English countryside. And dad bought this house. It isn't like it's been in the family for generations or anything. Are you suggesting that you'd be fine if we lost this house? It is nice having a place that's been here my whole life. But it's getting old. And the upkeep is becoming a bit of a headache. I don't think it's something we need to hang on to forever as it becomes more and more of a burden. You have really changed. Ever since you married that woman, you've changed. She had a really bad influence on you. I'm not a child anymore. I'm a father and a husband. So I can't live with you anymore. <gasps> oh, pretend that you didn't say that. I can't believe how much of an effect that woman has on you. It's pathetic. Excuse me? You need to think long and hard about who is more important to you, that woman or your own mother. I'll say this clearly. Whoever you choose, you need to be ready to get rid of the other. Are you going to cut off all ties with your mother to live with that woman? Sleep on it. Oh, and of course you can kiss your inheritance goodbye if you don't choose me. Hey Caroline, Harvey has the day off today, right? Do you two have any plans? Harvey took Summer to the park. Did he forget his phone at the house? He hasn't responded to my messages. Um, Aurora? 
Didn't you two decide not to have any more contact? That is why we moved out after all. Would you mind not messaging like this anymore? He said something to that effect, but I'm an old woman living alone. It's difficult for me if I don't have anyone that I can rely on. Who was it that told him that he needed to choose between the two of us? That was me. Well, he did just as you told him. Well, I never thought he would actually cut off ties. How was I supposed to know things would turn out like this? You thought he would leave me? Well, I am his mother. I carried him in my body for nine months and suffered to bring him into this world. Who would think a son would betray his own mother like that? You brought him to this, stamping all over his emotions. Everything I did, I did for his sake. I couldn't stand seeing him being forced into doing housework, despite working all day. And what about me? You know that I work too. You're choosing to work, so it's fine. Is that right? I see. You see, I hope by that you mean that you're going to get divorced. Of course not. I can't imagine there's anyone in the world who would do that for you. Then what is it that you see? I see that there's just no way to reason with you. No matter how many times we talk, I thought that living together would give us a chance to get close and build a relationship. I always knew that you didn't approve of me. Then why didn't you just do what I told you? Sure, I could have quit my job and dedicated my life to making my husband and children comfortable. In some ways, that's a very noble life. But Harvey and I have different ideas of what a happy life is. And neither me or Summer or Harvey either, for that matter, were able to live happily while we were with you. That's why we left. You're really not planning to come back? Not even just Harvey and Summer? Will you open your eyes already? How dare you talk to me like this, Caroline? It's Harvey. I just got home. We already agreed that I won't get any inheritance. We're not family anymore. So stop bothering my wife. Oh, Harvey. I was only ever thinking about your happiness. And like I said, it wasn't necessary. Now you said it yourself. I need to get rid of whoever I didn't choose. Well, I chose Caroline. I didn't choose you. How are you able to do something as cruel as toss away your own mother? Maybe because of all the cruel things that you did to my wife? Just hearing about your behavior was mortifying and just sad. And then you still had the nerve to tell me to my face to divorce her and remarry? I have to say I was pretty taken aback. But anyway, for the millionth time, you don't have to worry about me anymore. What about after I get old? Who's going to look after me? I think you need to figure that out yourself. If you're going to cut us out of the will, you should probably not rely on us for that. Also, I'm going to block your number as well. Caroline too, of course. Harvey, please listen to me. Harvey gave me the phone back, Aurora. So like he said, please don't message us anymore. Okay, I get it. Fine. You too, Caroline. It's okay if you come back here as well. So please talk some sense into Harvey. Tell him that we can all live together again, just like before. You want me to talk to him? Well, who else is there? Me? Who have you been so cold to this entire time? Me? Who you said doesn't count his family? Me? Who did all the housework except when Harvey helped me? You know. There was not a single moment where I thought I was glad that we decided to go live with you. So why should I try and convince Harvey that we should go back there? Well, didn't you say that you want to get along with me? If that's the case, I think you could do this little thing for me at least. That was while we were still living together. But you don't consider me part of the family. I got that loud and clear. So now I give up. I'm just going to live happily with my own family from now on. Okay. I'll help around the house too. That gives you some reason to live here, right? I think that living with somebody that you don't like is bad for your mental health. I think we both ought to be careful about our mental health. It's no worry for me. In fact, I want to live with you. I'm also worried that living with you, again, might have some bad effects on Summer. And I can't say that I really want to live with you anymore. No, we're not going to move back in. Please give up on that idea. Caroline, I've been really lonely since everyone left. So please, 
I think it's best that you get used to living alone while you're still feeling spry. Because you're going to be alone. From here on out, why don't you consider this practice for the future? Before no one will see you anymore. After that, Aurora attempted to convince Harvey's sister, Avery, to come live with her too. However, Avery had already heard about what Aurora had done and how she didn't consider Avery's husband a part of the family either. As a result, people started avoiding visiting Aurora altogether. During her time living there, Aurora would boast to all her single neighbors about how her son was there to take care of her in her old age. She would lord over her friends, claiming to be the happiest person alive, revealing in the love of her daughter-in-law and granddaughter. But eventually, nobody wanted to spend time with her anymore. Now, it seems she's living all alone. Thankfully, we didn't move too far away so that Summer wouldn't have to change schools. Despite that, we're living happily, just like before we moved in with Aurora. Personally, I would have preferred to move even further away from her. But we didn't want Summer to lose all the friends she had made at the school just because of her grandmother. Harvey and I coordinated to drop off and pick up Summer from school, making sure she never had to run into Aurora. We still have to remain cautious, but overall, we're happier now than we were before. There are countless ways for people to find happiness. And I won't say that Aurora's approach was necessarily wrong. However, trying to impose her way of thinking on others was a mistake. Moving forward, I'm going to trust my husband. And together, we'll work on raising our daughter. We'll build our own version of a happy family. One that works for us.